Hello, everyone. Let's see. Hi, guys. Welcome to our polymer clay jewelry making class. We are making fully customizable monogram jewelry. Monograms, words, letters, all kinds of fun, customizable, personalizable jewelry that you can make for everyone in your life, for Christmas gifts, for birthday gifts. The possibilities are endless. So we're working with polymer clay today from Blue Moon Studio. You'll find their polymer clay in the jewelry making department at all Michaels and on michaels.com. My name is Stephanie Menor, and I'm here to teach you some stuff today. So let's switch the camera to the top down view and we'll take a look at some of the projects that we have for you today. Maybe, maybe we're gonna switch to the top down view. There it is, okay. <laughs> Okay, so these are some of the pieces. So um, I think the, the title of this class was Monogram Jewelry Three Ways. There's probably going to be more than three ways. So these are some of the ways. Um, this, uh, I love this two-tone, the letters, one color. And the sort of disc that sits on is another color. It doesn't have to be a disc. It can be a heart. It can be a little diamond shape. Then we're going to play around with some stamps. And that's how we're going to make these. And then we're going to show you uh, ways of taking cutters that you may already have and making letters out of them. So let's move some of these gorgeous pieces off to the side. And talk about what we're working with today. So we're working with all kinds of awesome colored clay. And here's what the clay looks like when you buy it, when you find it in the store. Like I said, this is in the jewelry making department. So along with it, you're gonna find all sorts of tools that are jewelry specific tools. So this is a little different than what you'd find in the other aisles of Michaels where they have all of the different polymer clays. What I'm showing you today is specific to jewelry making. So these are some of the solid clays that we're working with today. We have an assortment of clay tools. Here's a great item. If you're interested in getting into polymer clay jewelry making, these are the basics that you're gonna need. You're gonna need a roller. You're gonna need some different kind of tool things. You're gonna need this pokey thing here. And in this case is a very, very sharp razor blade. And you're gonna use that blade a lot for cutting, for picking things up. Um, so you are gonna want one of those. I'm seeing some people in the waiting room. I don't know if you guys can uh, take care of that, but I see some people waiting to get in. Okay, also, we are gonna need some cutters. A few clay cutters. Like I said, in the jewelry making department, they have cutters that are sized specifically for jewelry, for earring making, for charm making. We're gonna need that. We are gonna be using some paint on a few things. This is, you can use the gold paint of your choice. This is the one that we like, this treasure gold, beautiful metallic sheen on that. You're gonna need some basic jewelry pliers and some basic findings, jump rings and some chain. If you're making necklaces, you're gonna obviously want some chain. And um, some other specialty things we're going to pull out along the way, one of which is a silicone mold. So typically this mold is used for resin crafting, but it works so wonderfully with, um, with polymer clay in lots of different ways. I'm just showing you one way that you can use polymer clay in this mold today. And then we have some stamps. So these stamps are... Um, they're clay stamps, so they you can use them for clay, you can use them for ink, because the end here has like a little bit of a bounciness here. But the cool thing about it is they snap apart like Legos. You see these? And so then you can build your word, like I have some words over here. So here's love that you can snap apart and snap back together. And so that makes it really easy instead of having to stamp four different letters, 
you can just stick them together and you're just gonna stamp once and they are perfectly aligned. If you see this side, you can see they are perfectly aligned. So you don't have to worry about each one being stamped and getting it to look the similar way as its neighbor does. Okay, so we're gonna be using those stamps today. And a few other things. All right, let's get started with our first project. And I'm gonna use a color it's a little bit like this. Of course, you can use the color of your choice. Polymer clay can be mixed together, and so you can create custom color combinations. And the first thing you wanna do with um, any type of solid clay is you want to do what I'm doing here. Um, this is called conditioning it. You're working it, you're warming it up, you're getting it super pliable and nice, you can see how it like kind of stretches before it breaks. So this is nice polymer clay that is conditioned. Okay, so the first one we're gonna do uses this mold and it is fairly simple here. So I'm gonna take off a ball of clay, oh, about, this much. How much would you say that is? A teaspoon of clay? <laughs> I don't think clay is measured in teaspoons, but that's about what I see there. Um, and I'm just rolling it in a ball kind of roughly. And then I want to choose whatever leather. I'm going to choose this G here. And I'm just going to press the clay into it. My hand is underneath here, kind of supporting that G from the behind from behind. And I'm just kind of pressing this down into it. And obviously I'm making an impression in that G, but I wanna keep pressing this until it is fairly thin. It's about how thin it is now. Keep going, being mindful that I wanna keep it even on all sides. And then because these are clear molds, I can look underneath. If I take my glasses off and look real close, I can look at that G from the back and see, are there any like little bubbles in there? Are there any weird folds in my clay? Okay, about like that. And we're gonna peel this off and we have an impression of a G. And it might not be perfect the very first time you do that. You see how I have like a little indentation there? It might not be perfect, but the wonderful thing about clay is you can just do this and you can just do it again. Let's roll that up. You can even kind of flatten it out to begin with. We'll put it on that G again. And I'm not worried if I'm, you know, obviously going beyond the G and into some other letters, we're gonna use a cutter. In this first project, this first monogram project, I would say it's probably the easiest one that we're doing because you can see I'm just kind of smushing. And let's see what we got here. That looks a little better. Let me bring in a supply that I didn't mention. And that is this uh, porcelain tile, ceramic tile, I guess it's not porcelain. This is a six by six ceramic tile. I like to work on that and I like to bake on this. This I use this like a baking sheet. This goes directly into my oven. Okay, so we have our letter there. Then you're gonna take a cutter of your choice and if you like to dip it in some cornstarch, that can help it release a little bit better. We're gonna center that G. In fact, I'm gonna move this so that I can see. Center that G, press down. We have a G charm. And this, now I can pick up, I'm only making one, I can pick this up and put it directly into the oven. So I don't have to move this somewhere else. It's the moving it somewhere else where you can, you can stick a fingernail in there, you can kind of distort it a little bit, but that's why having these towels, they're less than a dollar. Pick up a bunch of them 
and you can just put them directly in the oven and you don't have to move it. Now, if you don't have a ceramic cup, if you're doing this uh, with supplies that you already have, I wanna show you how to move it to something else, okay? So this is that razor blade that I said came in the, the toolkit. You can see it's very flexible. So if I need to move this onto a baking sheet, uh, we do recommend parchment lined baking sheet. You wanna put this down parallel to your surface and scooch, scoochy scoochy under here. Pick it up. Might leave a little bit, that's okay. And then I can transfer it to another spot, okay? If I have a little bit of residue, I can also use this as a little cleanup tool. And I, I keep a cloth on the side here, a damp cloth, and I'm just kind of wiping that off, okay? Also, the way that I store my razor blade is I have a just a piece of old leftover clay from some other project, and I keep it here at the top of my work surface, and I just stick it in there like this. And it stays uh, until I need it, pull it out, use it again. I do that because I'm so afraid I'm gonna pick this up on the sharp end. So I wanna make sure that I don't cut myself. It's very sharp. So I always stick the sharp end into clay and that's how it sits on my desk. All right, first project ready to go in the oven. So the oven, 250 degrees and it is preheated and we are gonna cook this for about 20 minutes. 250 degrees is a warm oven. So don't worry, you're, you're not gonna burn it. Um, I promise you, if it's truly at 250 degrees, you could leave it in there for 25 minutes. You can leave it in there for 30 minutes and you are gonna be just fine. All right, so simple as that. Now let's complicate things. <laughs> I'm gonna take my beautiful G here and we're gonna smush it back in there to the rest of the clay. So let's complicate it by trying to do two colors. It does get way more complex when you have two colors, but I'm gonna show you how to do it. And this is one, I'll tell you that it's not easy. It's one of those things that you have to do it a bunch of times um, to kind of get the feel of it. So again, it starts with this mold. I have a little bit of clay here. This is a great way to use up some leftover clay that you might have. And let's do that same G. I'm just gonna mush a little bit of clay into that G, kind of rip it off. And again, flip it over and then I have to take my glasses off, but I can see, I don't know if you can see, like there's like, a, it's like kind of folded in there. So I can really like push, I'm pushing against the back of the mold. I'm pushing against the front of the clay. I'm just really want to get that in there perfectly. Okay, so we have all this extra clay. And here's, we're going to use our blade again. And you want to be very careful doing this because you can cut your silicone mold. You don't want to do that. So you want to take your time. Okay, so I pick this up in my hand and I'm kind of, I don't know, bending it back a little bit. And I want to shave this off. And you can just do a little bit at a time. Anything I shave off, I'm just kind of returning to the lump of clay that I have. You want to make sure that you do not poke at it with the tip here. You want to make sure that the blade is all the way across your shape. And I can kind of like saw motion back and forth. You can see what it's revealing. And you want to get as much of it as possible. All those little extra bits. Then once you get down to just about clean, it's not perfectly clean, you can see there, if you take a damp paper towel, we wanna get those edges completely clean. 
and I got some gray into this H over here. Let me fish that out. This is when the pokey tool comes in really handy. Let's fish that out. So the wet paper towel is gonna to do two things. It's going to make sure that that clay isn't coming out and around the G. I'm kind of like working it. I keep this finger on the back of the G. And I have to take a look really close up to see if it's perfect. I can get my fingernail in there to make it perfect. You really want to spend some time perfecting because then in the next step, we are going to put a different color clay on. So I said the wet paper towel does two things. The first, it it makes sure that there's no overhanging clay. The second thing is it's cleaning up around the G. If you're like me and you use this mold for multiple crafts, you're probably going to have little chunks of resin on there. You're going to have little bits of glitter stuck in your mold. So you really want to clean up around it. Okay, so our G is ready. Um, FYI, we're not doing it in this class, but FYI, if you wanted to put this in the oven, mold and all, you can cure, you can bake your clay like that. So um, that goes for any silicone mold. Silicone can go in the oven. All right, but we're not doing that. That was just a side note. Okay, next step. We are gonna take a contrasting color of clay. I have this beautiful, what would you call this? Coral, kind of a muted coral color. And because my hands have a little bit of gray clay, I can see I've already gotten gray in there. I don't know if you can see, but I can see. Um, I forget to talk about this in my classes, but it underscores the importance of keeping your workspace clean, keeping your hands clean, keeping your tools clean. Um, a microfiber cloth I have off to the side here. When you're switching between colors of clay, always a good idea to wipe your fingers down because you will transfer, especially if you're going from a dark color to a light color, you will transfer. So um, I'm just going to mix that in and hopefully it will become part of our coral and it will be noticeable. Okay, so we make this into another circle. Put that down on our ceramic. I'm going to put a little bit of cornstarch. I use cornstarch like you would use flour in baking. It's so things don't stick like your rolling pin. This is an acrylic rolling pin. Comes in the um, the basic toolkit. So I'm rolling it. I'm turning it and continuing to roll. just kind of feeling I feel any lumps and bumps if I see any lumps and bumps okay now here is where here's the next challenging part the first challenging part is scraping that away without scraping away any of your silicone and getting it just perfect the second challenging part is you're going to flip that g over and without touching the mold too much to the clay just touch the G. So I'm literally like with my fingernail pushing the G. And then lift it. Oh, I didn't push it off. Okay, let's see. Let's see if we can save it. Here's, here's where we are. Here's where we are. Let me put that back in there. I did not push enough. I already have an imprint of a G. Let's see if we can get rid of that a little bit. Again, not pushing on the mold, just pushing where the G is. And lifting up. And that's how you can transfer the G. 
I got a little bit of a shadow of an H next to it, but I think that once we cut this out, that won't show. All right, so that's, the rest of it is easy. That was the hard part. Then we take a cutter. This circle cutter just fits perfectly. And when I cut it, I like to cheat it a little toward the top to leave me just a little extra space at the top of the G to make a hang hole. There we go. Gorgeous. And this goes into the oven, 250 degrees, 20 minutes. And I'll show you what you get here. I made a whole bunch of these. Different color combinations, different shapes. Um, on this shape, this diamond shape, this is a cutter that looks like this. Before I baked it, I used one of the basic tools, this tool, and just made some kind of like stitch kind of marks in there. That looks really good on any shape that has straight sides. We'll do that on another piece coming up a little bit later. But this is what they look like when they come out of the oven. Now, what you see arrayed here are some of my mistakes. So this is what was my learning process in doing this. So in some of them, I kind of distorted the letter a little bit. This T looks a little bit kind of distorted. It's a little bit of a learning curve for you. Like even this C, it's like, uh, got the kind of the edge of it. Merp. No, but as I did it more, they got better. And so let's pick this B here. So this is exactly how it comes out of the oven. It'll have some cornstarch on it. You can give it a little bath. You can uh, wipe it down with a little damp cloth if you want. And then if your edge, see like my edge is just not perfect. It has that little hangy bit. That's a great time to get out your emery board. You can just kind of perfect any of those little edges on the bottom, okay? And now we need a way to hang this, or maybe not. Uh, let me let me stop here and give you an option. If you wanted to make this into a stud earring, you do not need a hole at the top to hang it to anything. You need a finding that looks like this, a stud earring finding. And this glues onto the back. Maybe you'd probably glue it like kind of toward the top right there. And you want to use a... A super glue. This is a gel super glue that I like. And so you would just super glue that on there and then you have a chunky stud earring. Um, but we are not doing that. We are going to use this as a necklace pendant. So I do need to have a hole in the top of there. And you want to use a little hand drill. If you have a very fine um, motorized drill, that's great. Um, or a little hand drill like this, available at Michael's, of course. Available it with a bunch of different um, bits. So these two bits that I have here, this is a 3mm bit. This is the largest. And this is the bit that I use the most often, which is a 1.5mm bit. For necklace pendants, you do want them to hang freely. So you want there to be space around your jump ring. I'm actually going to use this 3mm bit. Let's see how that looks. So I hold it in my hand like this. I place it where I want that hole to go. And hope that it's centered. I second guess myself there because I thought, oh, is that centered? And then just start twisting. And then I'm just like reversing out of there. And a little bit of cleanup, but you have a perfectly clean hole at the top of that. Also great for a charm bracelet. 
So I prefer to drill my pieces like that. If you don't want to do that, of course, let me go back to my unbaked clay. Let's go back to our G that we made. You could use a pokey tool, a toothpick, and make a hole in the top of it, something like that. I don't prefer doing that just because I it's harder for me to control the size, the shape of that hole. I prefer to drill them afterwards, but that's up to you. So here's our B. Perfectly drilled through the back as well. Okay, so now you would want to turn this into a necklace. So that means, let's get a necklace chain here. So you can buy the chain um, already with the jump ring and the clasp, or you can buy just bulk chain and add your own. You're going to want some jump rings. One jump ring. And if you do not know how to open and close a jump ring, I'm going to show you right now. You're going to want a jewelry tool and find the break where it there's always a break in every jump ring and I can see that it's up at the top. And so I want to situate my pliers and a second set of pliers or just your fingers on the other side. And I'm going to pull one toward me, one away from me so it coils like a spring. And then I can feed that onto the charm and onto the necklace. And you can go through a link on the necklace if you want to keep that charm stationary. Or you can go around the whole chain if you want the charm to be able to move. Up to you. Let's close it up. You close it in the exact opposite way that you opened it. And there you go. Now, this happens to be a piece of bulk chain, so it does not have the lobster clasp on the end there. But what you would do is add a jump ring to one side and a lobster clasp to the other with a jump ring. I'm not going to show you that process. I think you guys know how to do that. Um, in the end, the assembly will look like this. So it goes chain to jump ring, jump ring to lobster. The lobster grabs onto a jump ring and that grabs onto the chain. So that's the assembly. Okay, so that's two projects down, two ways of making monograms down. Let's keep going. So I'm gonna bring in a new, actually the same one that I baked on. I have a lot of these going at once. I'm just gonna wipe that down. And you have like little baking residue on there. So I have a fresh tile here to work with. And we're gonna talk about finding letters in, in um, cutters that you already have. So here's two examples of that. A C and an S. So this S was actually made from this cutter and that C was made from this cutter. So I have a few other examples. Maybe your, your name is Ulysses. <laughs> you have a U. That would be this cutter or here's a V cutter. So a lot of ways to kind of um, repurpose the cutters that you already have. So I'm going to show you how to do this C, but I do want to show you, see how this one has texture to it? I'll show you how to get that texture. So you're, you're just basically cutting with a cutter and then cutting extra like freeform, freeform cutting. We're going to do the C. And the other thing you'll notice about this C is that it has a whole bunch of little funky colors in it and a hand sculpted flower which I'll show you how to do. So all of these little funky colors is a great way to use up your leftover play. Let's do that. I'm going to pretend that I have little bits of leftover clay here from other projects. 
maybe even some of this green. And I'm breaking off these pieces, but we're pretending that we have clay left over from another project. We need more. Let's add more green. So here I have just a ball of random colors. You really want to get a nice kind of a swirl. You want to twist your clay. And that will make it so that the color blobs are more like twisty. Now I'm kind of rolling it together. Make it in another ball. And we can do that again. Kind of make a snake, make it twisty. And the more I do this, the more our colors are going to start like this. The colors themselves, the blobs get smaller and smaller. All right, so let's just see what we have here. I like the way that side looks. And let's roll her out. So once you roll this out, you can say, well, that's not too exciting. And I want my clay to be more exciting. Well, I would just twist her up again. Twisty, twisty. And then maybe that side's a little bit more exciting. Some swirlies in there. Rolling, turning as I go so I can just make sure that I'm getting an even roll. I'm rolling this out to about, let's say, two and a half millimeter thickness. And then with my circle cutter that is soon to be a C, you can get that in a little bit of cornstarch. And then looking through the cutter, decide how I want these swirls to be placed. What looks cool? Hmm. I think right here. And then pressing down firmly. If um, that's not working for you, you can also roll on top of your cutters just to make sure you've gotten even pressure down through the cutter. And lift that up. And this piece of clay can be used to make something else another day. All right, so we want to get this middle bit out. And now we're going to do some hand sculpting. I want my C to be situated like that. So I need to cut. Oh, looks like I got it with my fingernail. Oh, those darn fingernails. This is why polymer clay artists that do this full time keep their nails very, very short. You will notice. So I'm, I, I got a little fingernail clip in there. So I'm going to cut that out. That's where I'm going to cut my for the C right there. You only need to cut out about a quarter of an inch. And that's our C. And now I will show you briefly how to make, um, show you the examples, how to make different flowers. Here's one. Here's another, similar, but a little different. This one looks a little more like a, um, a succulent. This one looks a little more like a rose shape. It's really up to you, but I'll, I'll show you how to do it. So get whatever color you want that to be. I want it to be this color. I think that'll look really pretty. 
and I just broke off a tiny little piece of it and I'm making that piece into a snake. And then making that snake into little balls. Each of these balls is gonna become a one single petal. And how many do you need? Well, it depends. If you want a very simplistic type flower, then you may only need a few. If you want a very detailed flower, well, sky's the limit as to how many petals that it has. And so as I break these little chunks off, I mean, I'm not being super careful. I'm not measuring this because I know in the end, my flower needs larger petals on the bottom and smaller petals in the center. So I, if if the chunk that I, that I cut off of there is a bigger petal, well, I'll just use that on the bottom. All right, that's probably enough. So let's start with some of the larger ones. Pick it up in your hand, or you can just kind of roll it. We want to get it into a sphere. And that goes in the palm of your hand. I got a little bit of green on that. It's okay. It's going to be fine. Um, if you have a ball tool, something like this, that comes in really handy for flower making because you can kind of mush it and pull a little bit and see how it like flattens it out. That's all I'm going to do to it. And I'm going to do that to all of these. If you don't have a ball tool, which I like this one because it's metal and it's heavy. Um, you can all, there's kind of a halfway ball tool on the end of one of the things that comes in the, in the basic toolkit. So let me use that one. I'm pressing and kind of dragging a little bit and then picking it up off my hand very gently, setting it back down and see how it has all these sort of just organic curls to it. That's what you want. That's how, how um, flowers look. They are organic and they're curling in all different directions. I realize now that perhaps I should have chosen a flower color that was not the exact same color as the palm of my hand. <laughs> so I'm sorry about that for those of you that want contrast. And try not to make these petals perfect in this step because we have a couple more steps where you're going to be placing them in their final form. So for now, we're just, we're just kind of flattening them out, getting them a little stretched. And these little guys are going to go in the center. Okay, that's it for now. And now we want to start assembling. So you want to take your pokey tool. And I'm going to start with the largest ones first. And I just pick it up like that. And we are going to also just like press it down into the clay. So these little indentations that we're making, those will be covered up later. Let's put this this way. Leaving these kind of like wide open. We wanna press it into the clay so that it marries with that clay below. 
because we, when this bakes, it will be, they will become one. And don't worry about how ugly that center is looking <laughs> um, because it's gonna be covered with more petals. We really want to make sure that these are stuck down into there. All right, and some of the smaller petals, when I place them, I wanna make sure that they are overlapping the two petals. They're, I guess you could say straddling the two petals that are underneath it. Well, this guy got all curled up. That's okay, we'll use him for the very center. And actually, you know what? Maybe we don't need one in the center. That simply, you can make a simple flower. Now, at this point, you can kind of just perfect it. So you can curl them onto themselves and like a peony or a rose has like kind of a wavy outer, you can kind of add that waviness by just sculpting it a little bit with your tool. You're adding waviness and you're adding curl, always curling inward. And some of them, like that one, it wanted to curl outward and that just looks totally cool and natural. So I went with it. Okay, so that one turned into more of a rose. I do wanna hide all of the goings on in the center of that. So you can use a bead for that. These are glass pearls glass seed beads and metal beads. Any of these will work. You know what, I think a pearl would look really pretty. Get one of those in there. Glass can go in the oven, metal can go in the oven. Wood beads can go in the oven. Plastic, I wouldn't recommend. So I'm seeding that pearl in there. Now I'm just kind of covering it up a little bit. Oh, I like it. Okay. All right, this is ready to go into the oven. We don't need to do anything else to it. It's gorgeous. Uh, 250 degrees, 20 minutes. Just sort of managing all of these different tiles that I have here. Okay, when that comes out of the oven, it's going to look something like this. This is one that I made earlier in tones of green. And when it comes off of the ceramic tile, this is exactly what it looks like. You can see the back end of that is not perfect, but we can make it perfect. Like that. Uh, let's see if I can find one better. I have a better nail file that's a ha ha. I do not remember. Do not ask me where I got this nail file, but it's got a little chunkier bite to it. And I like that. I can just perfect that bottom edge that was touching the tile. And it doesn't take much. Now, if you have, like I said, a Dremel drill that has like one of those sanding attachments, have at it. That'll make it look beautiful. But I found I can do what I need to do with um, a nail file, even in that center bit. Okay, there we go. Maybe just a little bit more here in the center. Okay. All right, so we need to drill a hole in the top. I will use the 1.5 mm, just because in the last one I used a 3 mm, you can see what this looks like. We'll place that where you want it to go and start twisting. And then reverse.
always need to kind of like clean out junk. You know what? Let's do that again. There we go. There's a chunk stuck in there. Okay. And here you would add your jump ring to the top. If I wanted to turn it into an earring. Okay, let's show you that. So an earring, you would need an earring part, an ear wire, and a jump ring. So if I wanted to do that, open my jump ring. Like that, feed it through, and then attach your ear wire and close it up. And really, after you bake it, you get to decide, am I making earrings? Am I making a necklace, a charm? And there you go. Okay, last project. Last project is Super fun. We get to use those snapping um, pants that I showed you right in the beginning. And to do that, we're going to use some, some gray clay. I'm just kind of reconditioning this because it sat to the side here for an hour and it got a little bit harder. Okay. Let's we'll give it a little start, a little cornstarch, pull it out. Okay, it's looking good. Oh, I didn't show you how to use the texture sheets. I mentioned them earlier, um, but texture, when I say texture, this is what I mean. Gorgeous, gorgeous texture sheets look like this. This has a ton of cornstarch in it, but this texture was achieved by this texture sheet. It's a flexible plastic. There's two different textures. Um, you want to lay it down and you don't want it to move, but you want to roll on top of it. And here's where when you're not teaching a class on Zoom, you would stand up and get all your weight kind of like down on this thing. Um, but I'm going to do this sitting down. And that's how you get texture on it. And then you would take whatever cutter you want and cut. Okay. So I just wanted to show you texture just so you can do that. Um, we are not going to do any texture for this last project because we're going to create our own texture. So let me just re-roll that. Again, rolling this out fairly thin. I'm doing about two millimeters, two and a half millimeters. Because I don't want this, this is gonna be a necklace pendant. Don't want it to be too chunky. Okay. All right, so now I get to use my cool stamp. So I have the word love. And um, so when you snap the stamp, the letters together, always be looking at the stickers here, the black stickers. Don't look at this side because you're going to get super confused because it is backwards as a stamp is. So look at the stickers, snap your letters together, and then you have them. And so right after you roll your clay, you want to stamp. And I found like a gentle kind of back and forth motion. Oh, no. Oh no, terrible. I didn't snap them together well. Let's see what happens. Oh, <laughs> it still turned out. Okay, so there is a little bit, 
here. Point with something. In between the L and the O, just the nature of the stamps, you can leave a little bit of a line, but um, if you have a little bit of rubbing alcohol and a Q-tip, let's get a new one, a Q-tip, you can kind of, it can help you get a little bit of surface texture out of there. So it's not going to help you if that's very, very deep. But this one wasn't so deep. It can kind of camouflage it. A little quick trip, trick for you. Um, so this one, we are we do not have the type of, this is what we're making, the type of cutter that's exactly that size. So we are going to cut our own. And we are going to be, of course, using our razor blade. So here it helps to get right down on top of it to make sure that you are cutting equal parallel to those letters. Let's pull that away. And same on the bottom. I'm going to turn this around so that I can see that I'm leaving the same margin from the letters to where I'm cutting. That kind of lifted it up a little bit. Leaving a little bit more of a margin into east and west. And we have something like that. And to give it a little fanciness, we are going to use our tool here to give a little bit of a stitched border. You don't have to go in very deep with these. Okay, that's ready for the oven. 250 degrees, 20 minutes. Say it with me now. Um, and that will be perfectly cooked. And let's show you one that is. Made this one earlier. And oh, we've made a mess. Let's just clean up a little. Made this one earlier. You can see a well-cooked polymer clay is very flexible. It's not going to be brittle. It's not going to break on you. If it is brittle or it has broken on you, it's probably because actually you've not baked it long enough. It didn't get to do all of its fun stuff that it does in that oven. So you might need to bake it a little bit longer next time. And this is what you have. So we want to add some dimension and shimmer. And that's when we are going to use some gold paint and you need just a tiny little bit of gold paint. If you have a paint palette, you can use that. Or if you have a piece of tape, you can use that as well. And a detail paintbrush. I'm gonna put some paint out here. and paint inside there. Um, is this my most detailed one? No, it is not. Let me get my most detailed brush. This little guy. You know, paint brushes have numbers on them. This says a number 10. I found among different brands, that number is almost meaningless. And you're gonna paint in here. And I'm not too, too worried about making it 100% perfect because I can come over the top of this and wipe away. Um, you can also use some acetone to kind of wipe away where you went over the shape.
And now my um, damp paper towel is no longer super damp, but let's see how this, this works. Yeah, there we go. Just a little bit of shimmer there. And now we are making this into a necklace. So I need to drill two holes, one here and one here. Of course, in your world, you would probably wait for that paint to dry completely, but let's just go for it. I want to get it close to the edge, not too close. If you get too close to the edge, you could, you know, make that connection point really weak and it can open up. So be careful about that. I'd say you don't want to be closer than about one sixteenth inch from the edge. All right, you're going to need some jump rings and a length of chain. I'm actually going to steal the length of chain from this other project because it's just perfect. All right, so you want probably at least 18 inches worth of chain. Um, Unless you want to make like a choker style necklace, probably about 18 inches is the standard to start with. Oh, through my jump ring. All right, we're, we're wrapping up here, folks. I want to thank you guys for joining. So as I put this together, I will give you guys a shout out. Please join us for our next class. We have some super, super cute Christmas classes coming up and lots of holiday festivities going on on michaels.com so check out the classes and events page we do a few of these classes every month and we try to keep it fresh with cool new projects and new techniques so um, I love to see you guys come back for multiple classes you guys are going to be experts at this point so just feeding the jump rings through and then stringing that on the very last chain link and closing that up. And you're gonna have something like this. Thank you, Deb. Where can you get that razor from? That razor is from Bead Landing. It comes in this kit and inside this little storage piece right here is the razor. Thank you, Jennifer Rowe, you're awesome. Thank you guys. Let's take a look while we're signing off here. We'll take a look at all the beauty things that we made. And we'll see you here next time. Thanks, Deb.